Yes, hello everybody. Welcome to Simon on the Sofa. Hoping you are receiving us well. Hello to any live viewers that join us or come on during. Hello, hello, hello. So today, I know that I've got some nice uh, feedback and people have uh, already know a little bit about JP or may think you know a little bit about JP based on um, some of the videos that you've seen. Maybe some of them might have been from the ultra spiritual series that is known a little bit for on YouTube or quite a lot of, on YouTube. And also, um, you may or may not know that he also works, um, you know, you could say in a more, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say in a more um, straight way, but um, he works, he works in a, maybe a more seriously funny as well, he works with people on a one-to-one -one basis and workshops and travels around the world and, and empowers or invites people to empower themselves through what he calls inner awakenings. And, and I'll let him describe that a little bit more and what may be brought into that. But anyway, welcome to Simon on Sofa, JP Sears. Hello, sir. Thank you, Simon, for having me on. Uh, this JP guy that you're talking about, he sounds pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah. I, would you mind, I've got an hour, would you mind telling me more about him? He sounds just <laughs> handsome as hell and fascinating. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I heard. I, I think I think the only reason I brought you on is so that we could talk about about him and also um, find out who the hell he is. You know yeah. what is what what is uh, what his mission is. Um, you know, behind any fascinating guy uh, are problems. So I'm sure he's got problems, and maybe you and I together uh, can figure out what those are and have an intervention for the poor guy. <laughs> Listen, there's one thing we can definitely. We might not be able to solve any, but we could definitely highlight a few problems this evening or, the, or this afternoon, wherever you are on the planet. I, I'm just going to say one thing that I love. I love when I first connected to this guy called JP Sears. Um, I, I managed to get hold of his uh, email from, you know, contacts that I had that, that could really get into, uh, into his, uh, you know, his entourage. And, um, and, and basically, when, when I communicate him, I love one of the messages sent back to me, and I know I've, I've posted this already, but for people viewing, it, it's like, bottom line is that we want to deceive people into thinking we're awesome, so we can feel more personally gratified. That's us living the legacy of Mother Teresa. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I was like, and, and, then, and then, you know, we had a few interactions with this guy, and he's like, I'm looking forward to acting like we know what we're doing. And, um, and then it was like, yeah, well, let's do, let's do that so that more people pay attention to us and we feel better about ourselves. <laughs> God knows we need it. Uh, but yeah, thank you for affirming what's real in life. Uh, feeling better about ourselves by making other people think we're more important. It's certainly the meaning of life that Gandhi taught. Uh, and, you know, Mother Teresa, when she wasn't busy stealing from the poor and giving to the rich, uh, she's certainly well known for that legacy. But yeah, thanks for keeping that real and sharing with me that gospel again today. That's awesome. <laughs> so what, you know, I think what, and what I'd love as well, JP, I know that, you know, I, I know a little bit about um, this JP guy, right? This, uh, this old double JP, you should be called JJP. And um, what, what, like, which JP are we playing with? But no, um, yeah, what I'd, lo what I'd love maybe is, is, is if, you're, if you're open to this as well, is because is, I looked at some of your videos and like you've got this naturally humorous, funny way of expressing yourself and expressing actually some quite, quite key, very key psychological teachings and, and, and I'm sure other teachings as well and you call it inner you know, awakenings. But it might be nice if, if, if for the viewers, if for the people definitely that, that love the sofa, if maybe um, you, know, you, you could share a little bit about how your journey got to where you became JP Sears or known as JP Sears, because that might not even really be you. And, mm. and, 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 and um, yeah, and just maybe your journey of truth a little bit, if there even is a journey of truth that you're on. For sure. Well, I'd be more than happy to share a little bit about that. Um, you know, I think, uh, and they go hand in hand, my journey of truth, as well as, <clears throat> excuse me, I've never been healthier, as well as how I became this, uh, you know, this on, one man entourage called JP Sears. You know, along the way in my life, I think in my late teens and early 20s, I, I 
I had a, a I don't know, a fire of inspiration lit where it's kind of like, eh, I, I'm thirsty for something more to life than this, than go to a college I don't want to go to so I can get a job that I don't want to have so I can have a family that I don't want to have and then retire in a retirement I don't want to have and all that stuff. It, I, I didn't know what, what else there was other than that, yet it, I was hungry for it, thirsty for it in this analogy. Let me get my cards straight. Mate, yeah, hold that thought, JP, if you can hear me. We, yeah. we, we, lost, we lost connection of you, and uh, I don't think anybody wants you to share your, 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 uh, your real story. They just want you to just <laughs> stay blue. Start again. Are you with me now? Yep, uh, I'm with you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I'm hearing you really well. So, so yeah, you, you, you got up to where you were saying, um, yeah, go, go, to, you know, go to work in the job that you don't really like and so on. Yeah, and then, you know, I, I read a book called Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. I'm sure lots of us have heard of that. It's, uh, you know, 20 years old, maybe 30 years old at this point. Who knows? It, it's been around a while. And that definitely spoke to me. And that got my wheels turning, kind of my, my, my self-spun cocoon that I had been in through years of just being emotionally disconnected started to crack a little bit. And then I got in touch with some really powerful mentors, not only helped me start healing myself and being curious about like, who, who am I really? Uh, but also uh, helping me acquire skills to work with other people who are uh, on their own personal healing and growing journeys. And you know, along the way, a, a natural part of my personality is I'm dysfunctional enough to uh, be humorous. And I do think that the degree of our humor depends on our dysfunction. You know, a good comedian is always the most disturbed poor son of a gun in the room. And I'm, I'm working my way up to be even more disturbed so I can be better at it. Awesome. I, I, I can relate to that as well because sometimes people say I'm really funny and I'm, I'm massively dysfunctional <laughs> oh and we laugh about it that's how demented we are but i love it <laughs> misery loves company but you and, can't, if you don't laugh about it though jp if you don't laugh about it, what can you do and then, and then and then sometimes i even say even this idea of dysfunction who the hell created the word dysfunction <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry yes. carry on carry on absolutely so I think the moral of this part of this story is I, I've always had a natural humor about me. And honestly, in recent times, uh, I, I've allowed that to really infiltrate the creative work I do via videos. Some videos, it's in there a lot. Other videos, it's in there a little bit. Other videos, not at all. Yet it's a very natural part of me. And uh, since I started my YouTube channel two years ago, I've just been giving myself a progressive um, nod of permission to be more and more me. Uh, right. You know, when I started making videos and doing inner healing work with people, you know, 13, 14 years ago when I started in the business, you know, I would look at the expectations I would create in my own mind and say, well, people who help other people in healing work, uh, they're not supposed to be funny. Uh, they're supposed to be serious. They're supposed to be boring. Uh, and that's what it takes to be insightful. And I, and I tried doing that for a while. And luckily, you know, what's not me didn't really fit on me. So, yeah, you know, the, the past little while of learning more about who this J.P. Sears guy is, which is a meaningful part of my life, learning more about who I am, it's been very enjoyable to me to see the, the comedy stuff uh, what I'll call conscious comedy that carries the message come out in the videos along with the, the more sincere, straightforward videos too. Yeah, and it's, yeah it's lovely. And it's, it's interesting because when I was watching your, your own, you know, your, your path, a little bit of your path and reading about it and seeing the work that you've been doing and, you know, resonating, some, you know, resonating with some of your videos, some of your videos, like people are like screaming at them. It's funny. And then, but then we're also getting different messages. So, you know, I was like instantly like just enjoying your humor. And I, I was also, I was, but what I was enjoying was the message actually, again, coming from maybe a little bit more of a sort of 
heavy intellectual perspective, I was also watching them to, you know, hear the message that you're saying almost in reverse to what you're saying. Or well, that was some of them I was reading, um, I was reading into. But I suppose I was also curious because some of them, I didn't get to watch the one on ayahuasca, but I did see a little bit of the comment thread and I, I, I've watched a few and I noticed, I don't get too caught up in the comment thread, but it's always interesting to just watch a little bit of how people react to what it is that you're doing and what triggers them and what doesn't trigger them and, and so on. So for me, it'd be like, like, you know, in terms of like you, you, like you called it conscious comedy, you know, you, you know, your intention, your intention is that you're transmitting a message or you're wanting to transmit a message um, um, of what you, how, you know, a truth or what you feel it is. But, but obviously some of them are, are controversial and also they're triggering people because you're sort of, you're sort of, um, I'm, don't let me put words in your mouth because I'm sure you won't, but um, you're, you're sort of, you know, you're trying to highlight some of the lies and the crap that gets caught up in the spiritual realm. Am I right in that? Yeah, absolutely. I'll tell you about one of my dysfunctions because you didn't ask, but it's incredibly related to what you're talking about. <laughs> what, and I mean this very seriously. Oh, I'm serious. Uh, one of my biggest dysfunctions that I've been working on is I, I'm a people pleaser by nature, which really means part of me is so terrified of not being accepted by other people that I'll, whatever, I'll say things in a way that'll please you, even if it's not my truth, even if it's me holding back 90% of my voice. So as I've become in more recent times, a little more friendly with my fear rather than just being afraid of my fear and therefore staying stuck in the protective jail cell of people pleasing, uh, I have found actually kind of uh, uh, very real inspiration on some of these topics and some of the angles I take on some of these topics, ayahuasca being one of them, to uh, uh, take a very sharp approach where, you know, my intention isn't to piss people off, yet I damn well know I could play it safe and make sure nobody gets triggered at this video. Nobody gets uncomfortable, yet I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say things in a way that are confronting. And, and Old JP never would have done that. I, I really appreciate that I'm willing to do that. You know, knowing that it, it causes inflammation. For some people, it's inflammation of laughter and appreciation. And, you know, okay, uh, that's funny. And maybe some people, I get the message, that's cool. I'm glad to learn that. And other people, you know, I think we tend to have polarized reactions when we look at a message that we otherwise didn't know about ourselves. One reality or one reaction is, I appreciate understanding that. Thank you very much. The other is we look in the mirror, see something about ourselves we didn't like, and we get angry as hell at the mirror. Exactly. So I, for me, it would be doing myself, viewers, the world, honestly, a very disrespectful disservice to try and play it safe, keep everybody happy. Um, if, um, uh, and I realize one of the consequences of being willing to express things in a way that can be very satirical and therefore very confronting, uh, is some people will have the impression this JP Sears guy is just an absolute heartless jerk. Why is he trying to hurt my feelings? Why is he belittling my religion of atheism or my religion of Catholicism or my religion of ayahuasca or carry on carry on I forgot what the question was uh, no 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 but it's good it's good what you just said so don't worry it's, it's um as you know there's no way that we're trying to go with this other than um yeah I think what I suppose for me it's what was really nice I'm just Changing something here, good. Um, yeah, what was really nice is, is I suppose, you're, you're un like you've chosen these topics, right? Whatever it is, you know, you've worked with people for 13 years, you've seen something within the personal inner transformation, the, you know, the self-development, whatever, and, you, and you've obviously, like you beautifully just described, you even are noticing your own transformation of stepping more into yourself by putting yourself on camera and, and embracing that fullness of who you are and allowing your humor to come out. So, so ultimately, 
because we, we're both in similar you know fields it's like I suppose what what is at the core of your your message like are you saying you know are you saying look if everybody changes and understands this understands anger understands their emotions understands a little bit more of how to be conscious we're going to create a better world or is it more just like look I've, I've done some changes myself and I want to share this with the world. Is it a path of service? Do you care about what happens? Because I know you've got this beautiful way of looking at life where you just sort of, look, I'm insignificant and I'm not insignificant. You know what I mean? Like what, what's at the core of your mission, if, if there is a mission of JP? It's all about the money. <laughs> at last, somebody admits it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, another part of me that is probably a little more truthful. I love that question. And I think, honestly, everything you just said is part of the anatomy of the core of my mission. Everything I talk about in videos, be they serious or comedy videos, it's either directly or indirectly very related to me, my life, what I've gone through, what I am going through, maybe what I will go through. So there is my life experience at the core of it. I think all my videos are therapy for me, it helps me reaffirm what I still need to learn. Uh, and yes, uh, going out from me, I would dare say there, there certainly is the intention to not force people of the world to help themselves, but invite people to help themselves. And I think wh wh when you boil down the diverse topics that I look at through videos, the core of that invitation for people helping themselves really carries a message of self-acceptance. If you have anger, well, let's not get angry at your anger. Let's talk about how to accept that. Uh, let, you have depression. Well, let's talk about how to accept that, not resist it. So I think the Dalai Lama, you know, he rattles on about compassion all the time. And I think that's a great message. I think compassion is self-acceptance. And, and if I could, uh, I have to be an arrogant artist type and say, you know, the ultra spiritual series, there, there's so many messages to it. And I do believe that. And that doesn't mean that all those messages apply to everybody. It means, eh, I think there's a bunch of messages in it. They may be shallow as hell for all I know. But even one of, I think probably one of the core underlying messages, even in the ultra spiritual series, is a message of self-acceptance. Where I'll, I'll, I'll satirically... Uh, play as that I believe people uh, or methods people hold that thought JP I lost you hold that thought JP's gone on spiritual hold. growth and self growth JP JP uh, are that. you with me again no no wait there wait there I lost you there okay was that we was getting into that we were getting into some juice so you come back let me hold that thought can you hear me okay I think I hear you again Wait, okay, wait, one moment. Let me just check something, yeah, because I don't think it's you. How, yeah, you know, you know, you know the um, on the top of your screen with the with the Google Hangout, JP. If you can hear me. Yeah, uh, I heard you say the top of the screen. Yeah, you know, there's a bandwidth. Did you see? Did you see the um, the bandwidth? It's like a um, triangle with like you know four lines on what's your bandwidth yeah on? should it, it's up all the way should i turn that down a little bit well i don't know because like i'm hearing you really good this end and then just you just skit out a little bit but let, let's let's go again if it does it again maybe we'll take that out if you've got it up full then that might be good it's okay carry on Cool. Well, just let me know if we need to adjust yeah. that. And I guess Steve Jobs is haunting us from beyond the grave again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's kind of okay, no, but go back, go back a tiny bit because you, what you were saying was lovely, and and you were saying just like the the, the satire and the at the core at the core of that. Just go back a tiny bit. Yeah, absolutely. At the the core of the ultra spiritual videos, I think one of the message messages delivered with a satire is. Um, 
a message of self-acceptance that says, hey, uh, please take a look at yourself. Look at these practices, beliefs also that you have that uh, you use to help grow yourself spiritually and take a look at how they can actually be used to diminish you spiritually, create disconnection, it is spiritual bypassing. So even looking at that, we're not looking at it. I'm not pointing it out for the purpose of shame the hell out of yourself if you do that. It's more accept it. If it's there, instead of rejecting it through your lack of awareness, accept it. And, it, and I do believe that uh, what we don't know about ourselves tends to control us. Uh, it really seems to be the case from my delusional point of view. And I think what we don't know about ourselves is principally the things about ourselves that we have yet to accept. Yeah, okay, nice. So what we don't know about ourselves are principally the things we have yet to accept. Is that what you said? I think so. Sounded cool when you said it, so yeah, I definitely want to take credit for that, Simon. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can put your name at the end of that quotation, okay? We'll capture that one and, and we'll put that up as a Facebook post. Perfect. I will definitely own the copyright for that. I'm all yeah. about ownership and control. Yeah, exactly. That's why, I, that's, why, that's why I wanted to invite you on here, you know, because I knew that you was just really a bum. <laughs> so that. Yeah, yeah, but but you know, like, like, and with your state, thirteen years, you know, you you've come out, you you, you I mean, and and I know I can already feel it in you. You know, you, it's a constant dance, um, meaning that you know you've you've come out of your dysfunction, or you're open that, you're transparently sharing yourself. You know, you're inviting people in to look at themselves. So, so do you feel do you feel that you're uncovering? I call it the lie, yeah. And again, you know, I don't want to put any words. This is the idea of the invisible prison or the lie or this deep conditioned program, you know, like you mentioned, I don't want to shame you, like shame, guilt, anger, embracing the shadow, not running and spiritual bypassing. And these are when you're in this field, these have become almost like a new way of viewing the human experience. And these are like almost like a new language. And like you said, I love some of your videos, like, you know, the, the spiritual dating or the veganism or, you know, and then we start to like move our beliefs from one thing or our addictions from maybe what was maybe not so, un was a bit unhealthy at one point, move it into something that we now think is healthy and then just continue to live in, a, in, in the same addictive, you know, un uh, unconscious, maybe it's times, um, painful, suffering, suppressing way to ourselves. And, you know, what I'd love to hear from you, or if you've even uncovered anything on your experience for the viewers, for beautiful people watching us that, that are also obviously on this, you know, this like alchemist journey, this this journey of self-discovery, the, you know, the journey, if, if Cole Young would call it, you know, seeking the peak experiences or the, you know, releasing ourselves from, from what some would call a, an unhealthy ego, etc. Like what? What juice have you uncovered? Have you? Have you? Do you feel you've connected to some form of truth that you now are, are trying to, you know, to live fully for yourself and to, to point out for others? What, what? What? What truth have you uncovered? It's a good question, and it's a truth that I guarantee my future self will disagree with. At least I hope that's true. Otherwise, that means I'm dogmatic about this truth if I forever believe it. Um, so the truth of this moment that seems to be serving me well, it's giving me a lot of traction under my feet and people seem to dance well with it, it is the truth that the, past, that the path we take to find ourselves will soon become the path we lose ourselves on while we're still believing we're finding ourselves. And, and I think that has a lot to do with attachment. We get attached to what, what works well for us. And we unconsciously pretend it works well for me now, so it's going to work for me forever. What we're really saying is the more this practice, belief, self-growth strategy becomes familiar to me, the more comfortable and safe I feel with it. So I, I think life is better than that. To be honest with you, I think life is dynamic. I don't think it's constipated and stuck. So, you know, the idea that 
what serves me beautifully and helps me grow if I become dogmatic and attached to it, it will become a place of diminishment for me. And, and honestly, we got to get really insecure if we even pretend that's true, because that means, okay, the foothold that I've just worked my butt off to step onto, I, climbing the higher mountain of my peak experience, I'm on this foothold and I've worked damn hard to get to yeah. it. Yeah. And you're telling me that if I stay here, it's going to be to my diminishment. It's going to be counterproductive to my growth. And I'm thinking, based on my experience, yes, it will. Be there for the length of time it serves you while being aware that there will come a time when it'll stop serving you. And I think the human ego is a great gift and it's an incredibly tricky gift and our ego loves to shape things that are familiar. They have a sense of control over. It loves to shape them through our distorted perception to make them look uh, uh, like there's great benefit to it. You know, mm. people who, whatever, a common example, they adopt a given diet, let's say vegetarianism, works amazingly for them for a couple years, and then their testosterone levels just drop through the basement. And they said, well, I don't know, I'm vegetarian. Maybe I need to go vegan now because this isn't working for me. Uh, as opposed to saying, well, maybe vegetarianism was perfect for me for a while. And uh, maybe I'm a dynamic force of life that uh, uh, moves. So I like that. And, and, and I realize as I'm speaking this truth, my truth that believes the path we take to find ourselves will become the path we lose ourselves on. I wonder how eventually believing that truth will start working against me. Yeah, great. And it's, it, it, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it brings you back, it brings you back to the funky paradox because it's like a, a constant dance in the mysterious paradox or what I call the funky paradox because what you're saying is, you know, so true. I, I'm, I myself am whatever I, I don't even like naming what i am you know to even say you're vegetarian or veganism or whatever you know often people say well are you are you a vegetarian and i say well no they say are you a vegan and i say well i eat cake sometimes and people put egg and butter and stuff in certain cakes so i don't know what everyone's making i'm not always buying vegan cake for example and if i'm out and i'm really hungry and I get a cheat if I get a pizza, I often just roll with the cheese, right? You know, it's like it's on there, so I'll have some cheese, etc. So, and and also somebody said to me the other day, well, you can't be vegan because you eat you eat honey, and honey is like the bee, right? And and you're taking from the bee. So there's so many different dogmas and beliefs of, you know, some people eat tuna and say they're vegetarian, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, and and as much as I don't want to get caught up on the, the vegetarian story. What, what, what I'm more interested in is how we can, because so many people, and my, myself included, you know, more importantly was about the ethical reasons and what, was, what I was seeing happening to the abuse of the meat and, and so on. So I just thought, well, if I can't track that, if I can't track that, better I don't eat it, you know? And I was, I was training in the gym and eating tuna like it was going out of fashion, you know? I think I've eaten more, more turkeys, um, I've probably eaten more turkeys than most people have ever seen. So, so you know, I was like t tuna rice, turkey rice, protein, whey protein, get down the gym, pump your bicep and look in the mirror, right? That was, you know, one of my journeys. And like you said, that served me for a long, long time. And then it got to a point where I started to research some other information about proteins, about energy, about fuel, about mixing different nutrients and, and vitamins, etc. And it was like, okay, well, I can still be live how I want to live and I don't need that. And then some of the stuff that I studied JP and went to pay to become a personal trainer and a nutritionist, etc. And then, you know, 10 years later, you read something that actually sort of abolishes everything that, you know, you actually studied and read. So this idea of holding fixed to a truth, um, it doesn't really, I don't know what you feel about this, but it doesn't, it would be ludicrous to hold on to something that's constantly moving and, 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 and malleable and, and so on anyway, wouldn't it? But underneath that, are we pointing to a one truth? Like if you talk about spiritualism or you talk about all these different isms and the absolute and so on, you know, are we just all a mental mass of 
idiots that know nothing but trying to work themselves, work out something along the way. And, and, and ultimately, nobody, you know, there's no one way and no right way and everyone's just full of crap. What's the story? <laughs> I love it. You know, I would be disappointed if somehow I found out that part of life was not the fact that we're all a mass of mental idiots. I think life is, I think life is too important for us not to all be at least a little bit, if not a lot, idiotic, getting crazy, getting dizzy in our own belief systems, getting dizzy and chaotic in our life. I think it's an important part of the flavor. And, you know, do I believe there is, you know, the one truth, kind of capital T? I do believe that from my relative mind. I also believe about that truth is that it's unbelievable. Meaning I think it's, un, I would guess, I believe that that truth is incomprehensible to believe. So when we, I think we get pretty idiotic is when we try and put into our human mind comprehension an incomprehensible truth. You know, if you have a little knapsack that can fit two kilos of weight, and you're trying to put something in at the size of Jupiter, you're going to get yourself a little crazy if you keep trying to do it. Yeah. And it's, it's maybe like a bunch of, you know, thousands of leaves hanging off the same tree, all disagreeing what the damn tree, uh, the one truth of the tree is. Well, we're all connected to the same damn truth. And perhaps our conflicting delusional opinions are, ironically enough, a necessary part of the truth. Yeah, um, right. it's an expression of it. So, you know, I think it's important to let ourselves get crazy, get ludicrous, look for the truth that we'll never find. T try and comprehend what we'll never find. Hopefully, while not taking ourselves too seriously, letting ourselves go into the paradox that says, I'm looking for something that I'll never find. Yet I'm going to let myself keep looking anyway. It's it's part of the curious ambition of the human spirit. And I think where that becomes a, a tormenting cage where we're willing to yell at people who, you know, are, are on a different branch of the tree. They have a, a slightly different opinion that we know for damn sure is not true. We can just not take ourselves as seriously. Then I think we're a, a bit more accepting of other people. We listen to their delusional truth because we see our truth is incredibly delusional too, while we give ourselves the permission to still ambitiously seek what we'll never find through the small comprehension of our human mind and experience. At least that's my truth. In this <laughs> that part of me doesn't even believe. Another part of me believes it though. And I believe that part of me doesn't believe it. <laughs> and, I, and I believe I believe that I believe that maybe you believe that there's a part of you that doesn't believe it and a part of you that does believe it. But that's my belief only. There's something about this thing as well. Have you noticed that pops up a lot in the sort of <clears throat> self-development, new age world, is, 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 is this idea that the great way out of the, the, the delusion or the unknowing or, or, or is that they say, well, that's my belief, right? And it's like, well, if, it's, if, if I can bring it back to it's my belief, we're saying it's my belief, but what we're really saying underneath that is, it's my belief, and I really want you to believe it too, yeah? It's like, <laughs> like, like, like the, I'm saying it's my belief to bring it back to myself, but really I want you and everyone else to get it, right? It's like, do you, ever, do you find that sometimes? It's like, you know, because people go, you know, listen, it's this, 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 this is a fact, and it's like, well, that's just what I believe. But, and then we can, sometimes we can get a little bit, um, like you say, it is mental, if you think about the wars and all the mass suffering that does take place, is because so many people do believe their, like you described, their, you know, insane, ludicrous ideas. And when I look out the window, I look at the way some people do interact with life or treat themselves, I do think, wow, you know, based on maybe what I've moved through or how I view the way the world could be, that is kind of even more insane than maybe what I'm proposing over here, right? Um, so then we come into this sort of balance of what's more crazy, you know, what, you know, what is actually more crazy than, 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 than the other person? And you said something there as well that sparked, um, yeah, this, this 
I suppose a lot of people, if they go on a spiritual journey, and I use that word lightly because sometimes I ask myself, well, what is spiritual? You know, like people say, if you've read Eckhart Tolle or you've read Neil Donald Walsh or you, 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 you read a bit of David, David, data, then all of a sudden you're spiritual, you know? And it's like, but was you born spiritual or you just like, you're not spiritual as a baby only when you've read Eckhart Tolle, when you're, you know, when you're 25. Do you see what I mean? It's like, at what point did, did this idea of, spirit not be who you are as you are right this second and and you know and then we can talk differently at that so maybe like based on you being ultra spiritual you know how do you define spiritual uh, you know i do have a definition and i will share it with the agreement that um i'm not dogmatic about it at all it, it so it's sort of like a working definition, one of those things defining that which can't possibly be defined, that, but we define it anyway so we can have some kind of sense of structure and direction. So how I look at spirituality is simply wholeness and connection, period. What I'm doing in my life in any given moment, am I increasing my sense of wholeness or am I diminishing it? Am I feeling more disconnected and separated with my thoughts, actions, feeling? Or am I feeling more of a sense of wholeness and connection? And I do say sense of wholeness or sense of disconnection uh, on purpose. I personally believe we are, uh, are all inherently whole. I believe uh, we're all... Uh, Part of this thing called oneness, whatever that is, yet we don't believe it. And I, I, hands raised, I don't believe it too. There's a part of me that believes differently, yet my human mind, yeah, I don't believe it. I see this sense of separation between you and I. We're separated by thousands of miles. So the, the sense of wholeness, am I realizing a little bit more, it, a few more millimeters more of the wholeness that's actually there? Or am I kind of fogging that out, becoming a little bit more delusional and therefore feeling less whole, therefore feeling uh, more separated? And I love the Zen people. Their definition of contentment is... Uh, accepting what is, accepting our wholeness. And their sense of, their definition of suffering is a sense of separation. And I, I personally get a lot of mileage out of that. And I know there, uh, there's a lot of ways to define spirituality. For me, what matters most is that we all define it a way that actually helps us along in our journey a little bit more. Mm, yeah nice yeah thank, yeah thank you for breaking that down it's, it's, it's something popped up for that today you said zen is <clears throat> this connection to wholeness or is it was this idea that you know we're often we often have this or again this might be a, a new thread or maybe it's been around since Lao Tzu and, and the Tao Te Ching but because he was kind of a wise cat and um, you know this idea that we're already complete, we're already whole, nothing needs, you know, nothing needs fixing per se, nothing needs changing, you know, you accept what is and you, you flow with that, and you start to engage and, and interact and have a relationship with life that is so beyond words different than you could ever really imagine. It's clearly an experience, right? Life is an experience, there's no doubt about that. We're here to experience, it's, that's one thing that's definitely taking place no matter what the experience, but, then I, then I find that there's such that, you know, we look out in the world and we look at the individuals and I know this is the work you do. People come to you, you know, even says on your, 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 um, <clears throat> you know, your wonderful websites, you know, if you're, you're feeling whatever, anxious, upset, challenged, you know, so many human beings, you know, four billion of, of, of our interconnected human species are in, are in strife, a challenge, a struggling, you know, it's, and I mean, I'm sure it's more than that. I don't know who's doing the count, you know, but um, who's, who's going around with a questionnaire going, hey, hey, are you dysfunctional? Okay, we've got another one. There's another one on the four billion. God damn it, they're growing by the bucket load. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, do you suffer from anxiety, fear, worry, sheer like you want to kill yourself? Okay, we got one. They're peeling off here, you know? Um, are you crazy? God damn, that's seven billion. 
Uh. Oh, I want to share something with you, Simon. I've actually got the list right here I've been working on. So you definitely qualify. I'm going to put a check mark next to you. As, so that's 4.1 billion, right? So, um, so you know, so, so what, what I mean is like, you're bringing them back to this connection, this wholeness. And again, I'm, I'm just saying this because that's what you're saying is almost this spiritual connection. This idea that accepting all that is coming back to that. You said it as well, didn't you, about the ultra spiritual, the series was pointing back to like self-acceptance. So what, what have you uncovered? Like, how did we get so unaccept, unaccepting, you know? It's like, and, and, and what's this journey back to, is everyone on a journey back to self-acceptance or just, just the, you know, the one billion that are in the, in the self-development world and making money from it? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, my best answer is I have no idea, but here's my <laughs> made up answer that's engineered purely out of my delusional opinion. I do, you know, my belief that we're, wholeness i do believe we're all on that journey uh, you know a, a question that has a variable answer is do you know you're on the journey so you know i don't think the purpose of life is necessarily to know what the purpose of life is therefore I, you know, along the same token i don't necessarily think that the purpose of the journey is to necessarily always know we're on a journey uh, I think sometimes we need to be more into it, and that has its challenges as well. So yeah, when we're when we're on this journey, you know, I think eventually, whether it's this lifetime, next lifetime, whenever the heck it is, it, there I would guess there's a natural progression of wakefulness where we kind of realize, oh yeah, upon a journey. Don't know what that is, but I'm on a journey. And what seems important to me to make the journey practical, you know, to, to help make practical strides on the journey, which I know is self-defeating. We're striding on the journey like we're trying to get to the destination. Yeah, it's a paradox. No matter what we say, it's proven with delusion. But anyway, this is my little part. <laughs> to, to me, it, it, it's... What I really value in my work with myself and others is making it practical, really connecting to our humanness. I think paradoxically, the most wide open doorway into our spiritual self is through our human self. You know, a lot of us, when we're thinking spiritually, we get really abstract and uh, that kind of stuff, which is cool. It has its time and place. But if we're doing it at the expense of disconnecting from our humanness, you know, the mundane humanness, and I'm talking about emotions, hurt feelings, uh, challenges, frustrations, I think that's us bypassing the wide open door in favor of finding a more convenient looking door that might lead to, well, not very much of anywhere. I, I think Carl Jung said it beautifully lots of years ago when he said, our feelings are the language of our soul. And, you know, these feelings we have, you know, we'll, we'll get on the Carl Jung bandwagon when we're feeling happy and joyful. But, oh, when we feel afraid, ashamed, angry, now all of a sudden these aren't the feelings of our soul. They're an inconvenient human travesty. So let me get rid of those. Uh, let me deny them, medicate them. But I think those feelings are incredibly important. If Carl Jung was halfway right, that's the language of our soul talking to us. And I think from my perspective, um, on the whole, I mean, and I'm talking like vast majority of everybody, if not everybody, uh, Along the way through our childhoods, societal experiences and conditioning, we learn to disconnect from the language of our soul. Uh, we learn how not to embrace our feelings, that is perhaps embrace the language of our own soul. We disconnect from it. We learn essentially the opposite of acceptance. So I think the whole practice, going back to what we were talking about earlier, of self-acceptance it's really about accepting the higher aspects of ourself. You know, the 
our, our soul that's packaged in the inconvenient human mundaneness. I personally, you know, I'm big on emotions because it's the language of our soul. Uh, and I personally believe our emotions, it's like the, the bow that plays the violin strings of our own soul so that we can hear, feel, and dance to our own goddamn music. Mm. Rock on. We should have had some music at that point. What happened? We, the production value was atrocious. Mm -hmm. You told me we were going to have music, Simon. I'm out of here. Ah. God damn it. JP's left the building. <clears throat> Let me no, get my entourage and get the hell out of here. Yeah, get your entourage. They're going to come any minute. I can, I'm, sensing, I'm sensing that lingering in the background there. Um, so, you know, it's, it's something, I'm really, something I'm always trying to like, dive into more and more in this, uh, with these conversations as well, as, as you know, showing up and spontaneously sharing and diving into, you know, the soul, what it means. And, you know, like you said, um, you know, past lives and, and the karma and the paradox and, you know, and so many. And, and I think for people watching, you know, we, you've got to come back to yourself. You know, you've got to come back to this place of, where you really are in amongst all of this, because, you know, there's so much information and so much going on. And, um, you know, because often people, they can also bypass by saying, you know, past lives, I'm gonna come back in another life. And personally, I don't know, I don't remember being in any other lives. And if I am, then, you know, great. But, you know, somebody must have wiped my, my memory of that so that I could just come here and have a good time struggling my ass off. So, um, you know, so, so, the, so, the, so the crazy, the crazy thing for me is always like what you said really is just bringing it back almost to the humane is, is, is what you said bring it back to the human emotions the human experience what's right here right now and, and then in that place when we embrace that but don't run away from it you, you, what you're pointing to is that there's an opportunity and the opening there for something greater am i am i sort of hearing you right i uh, absolutely yeah that's exactly what my delusional opinion is saying for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, mm. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that delusional opinion of yours. And um, so, from this point where you are, I know we don't have much time, but from this point of where you are, yeah. Or, because it, it, you said something to me lovely before we came on about children and then, then realizing at some point it's not all about them. And, but then I said, like, ultimately, it's all about us. So, you know, you, you know I, I know that Don Miguel Ruiz says in his uh, book, Four Agreements, and, and the mastery of love is that, you know, we're all just in our own dream, you know, and it's like each of us are in our own dream. And you're pointing to this idea of oneness and interconnectedness. But within that, we're all still having this sort of one dream that we see reality, how we see it. And, and we're painting this picture the way that we that we um, see and feel it. Um, but you know, so what what is JP's vision and dream at this point? You know, where 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 do you see humanity or even just yourself and your community flowing? You know, what what's your interconnected contribution? Yeah, you know, I think it was Oscar Wilde whose words I'm going to plagiarize right now, who said. Life is too important to take seriously. And that, that sounds not very deep and philosophical and profound, yet it resonates like hell with me. So what my vision is that, uh, you know, it's one of the invitations I offer to people. It's uh, a vision for me personally is continue to do my best to not take life too seriously. And I'm not talking about deny the hardships of life and calling that, well, I'm not taking it seriously. Well, yeah, I'm not talking about denial either. I'm talking about be connected and intimate with life and not taking it seriously and not taking ourselves too seriously. Being able to have beliefs because we need them and we're going to have them whether we want to or not. We can even say, well, we don't need beliefs. Well, and that's, that's the belief, true. right? <laughs> Amen to that, brother. You can't escape it. But can we do our best to have beliefs and not believe our beliefs? 
we give part of us permission to believe the belief. It gives gives part of self a sense of safety and uh, you know reference point. And can we also realize a that's a belief, and what I believe has zero correlation to truth. Um, hmm. That to me is uh, it's one of the ingredients to help us better take in the beautiful spectrum, the beautiful colors of life. I think we constrict our eyeballs and we distort what life actually is, who we actually are, when we take things too seriously. And and again, that's not an indictment to go joking around about everything, you're at a funeral, so let's make jokes about that, not by any means. But for me, that's an important part of my vision. Yeah, yeah, lovely. That's lovely, and 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 it's funny because again, you call you you say you're doing conscious comedy, and it's like again, there's this. It, it's something to point out to the viewers is that when you're in that space of maybe all all is as it is, you know, allowing what is, not taking life too seriously, you know, and realizing you're very you're a speck of dust, but within that, you're part of something very vast. Mm. And, 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 and feeling into then what is authentic for you from that space, because there's something here coming up around authenticity and transparency and being impeccable to your word, or you said doing the best you can, because, you know, there's a seriousness in your fun, JP, you know, and that, that's, you know, so I always say when I'm making people laugh in a more, I'd say conscious way in my projection, in my delusion of what conscious is now, um, then I, you know, I'm I'm very much saying this is serious fun, you know. This is like, you know, I'm I'm always interested in what I am birthing for the next generations and what I'm leaving as as I'm li living my own legacy. And and you know, again, that's my story, my narrative, what I what I'm choosing to do. And and I've written, you know, I've come, I've written some funky funky uh, story along the way. You know, I've dived and delved into all sorts of different things and, and in diving and exploring and trying and tasting, you know, you, you get to actually come out of the end at some point where you, you know, there is this element of that you have to let go. Because if you don't let go, I think you said it at the beginning as well, you're only going to end up just constricting your ability to open to more of, of the magic that's here in the short time that we have to live it. Um, and based on that, just a few last minutes with you, JP, I'd, lo you know, I'd love you to dive in because you, you mentioned being in a funeral and, and laughing at the dead while they're just being put in the coffin. <laughs> He's got it down. There's one, there's one gone. Um, but, you know, as, 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 um, as um, you know, for me, death is a real access point to living, um, living beautifully. Death for me is a real access point to not taking ourselves so seriously, but also aligning to a much more purposeful mission on, on planet Earth. So I'd love to hear a few um, dead end jokes. No, I wouldn't. I'd love to hear a few. I'd love to hear a few. Um, yeah, whatever. Just a few. Whatever comes up with you when I mention the word death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not going to sit here and pretend to have some, you know, full spectrum extrasensory perception to what happens to us after death. What I do have is a lot of curiosity. And I'll, I'll marry this curiosity with a, a lovely thought. I think it's probably from Alan Watts, who says nothing is as it seems. So when we take a look at death, it, it seems like that's death. Yet I get curious, what if it's actually a rebirth? Right. You know, we, we say what happens to right. us when we die? Well, what if the answer to that is found through the question, what happens to us when we're born? If we were to somehow get into the psyche of the, the fetus who's being pushed from its life, the only life it's known, uh, at least in this lifetime, from its home, and it's being pushed from a force of nature that's bigger than it, it can't control, and it's being pushed out of there, I would guess if we get inside the psyche of that fetus, it's not excited about a rebirth. I would guess the fetus is act, the little baby is reacting as though it's going to die. 
if they had the, the thinking mind to think the actual feeling oriented thoughts, I am going towards a certain death. Babies come out crying, terrified at what the hell this is. They don't come out all jolly. Well, it was new life. This is great. This is a bigger life than the world I came from. So I would dare say anytime we're being born into something greater, perhaps we will experience it as a death. And we'll, we'll actually have to react as though we are dying. We'll believe we are dying. And in truth, what was for us is dying in order for us to be born into something new. And I do mean new, not familiar. Uh, death is certainly a word of mystery. We, we don't entirely know, or maybe at all know, what is on the other side of the, you know, what's the mystery on the other side of this phenomenon called death? Who knows? Yet I am curious. Yeah. What if the answer is found through considering what happens when we're born? We get scared to death, we struggle, and then we progressively realize a greater, wider, more expansive world with more opportunities and more challenges than the world that we came from. Who knows? Mm. Yeah, great, great question I asked there. Because I might as well compliment myself, nobody else will. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, 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 I enjoy that. I'm, I'm going with that, JP. And I'm going, I, what I mean by I'm going with that for people listening, don't get, you know, too caught up. But for me is that we are constantly experiencing death mm. and that death and life is not separate. We, we, we seem to give it a word over here, the big dark demon of death is the end of everything. I haven't seen, in my experience of being so-called alive in this dream, dream-like experience, that every time something is risen and everything is something's risen, it's passed away. Every time that I've moved on, I've had to die. My skin's dying daily. If I leave a relationship, a new one opens. If I break something, something, you know, something fixes. It's like this constant dance of, of life and death. And, and I, I often say to uh, people or in my own inquiries that, you know, what is actually separate? You know, what is, what, like JP just said, is that, you know, there's, isn't there just a rebirth to, to death? So I'm not talking like JP said after um, what happens when we actually physically die. I'm also interested in how we can die daily, die daily to our dogmas, die daily to our beliefs, die daily to the things that we're holding on to that are giving us some sort of identity. So if we die now, die when we're making love, you know, imagine that, yeah? Like dying in the process of making love, touch your partner's chest the first time and imagine you're never going to touch it again you know it's like connect to this life like it's already gone and it's you know and and, and that that for me for me again i'm not even going to say it's my belief but my experience is that i seem to somehow have a much more rich fulfilling and like jp beautifully said not so serious um ride while here on planet earth because it is a ride i tell you that um jp i'm mindful of your time unless you want to say anything because we, you know we're going out there and you're a serious person and, and people want to hear what you've got to say because you're important yeah so if there's anything you want to say to the world right now please do yeah it's very important that you know that i'm important and uh, yeah, I mean, amen to everything you just said, my insightful friend, Simon. I mean, that's awesome. And I'm just going to borrow a little bit of your great wisdom there with a little shameless self-promotion because, uh, well, because it's going to happen. You know, the Ultra Spiritual Series, the, one of the intentions that I, I now have the words for because you just you gave them to me. The Ultra Spiritual Series is inviting people to take a look at what's dead to them and inviting them to allow it to die, allow what's expired to be composted so that the new life can become created. Let our old beliefs and dogmas become the poop that 
fertilizes the beautiful new growth. And, you know, it's just kind of like someone who's physically constipated. The old poop, if it's not let out, it, it, it rots us. I mean, it right. literally rots us from the inside. It's incredibly disgusting. It's weird how the universe makes that happen. It's like a <laughs> demented mind, maybe, that would have made that do it that way. But, you know, with all due respect, we all carry so much crap in our minds or our psyches. And if we never have a colonic, we're never invited to get rid of the old crap that we don't necessarily have the pathways for uh, in our normal daily basis. So the moral of this analogy is the ultra spiritual series is a colonic. <laughs> I love it. A, a, a colonic to clear out the crap. <laughs> the crap. The three C's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a colonic to clear out the crap. It's the, forget, it's the, it's the four C's, the C, 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 C. That could be a new band. The conscious colonic to clear out crap. Um, it's got the purification that everybody needs. J, JP, thank you so much for joining me on the sofa. Thank you for... Uh, entertaining me thank you for entertaining millions of other people and also consciously doing that thank you for being vulnerable thank you for all your contributions and whether you believe them to be true or not I'm gonna ask you one last thing just for everyone viewing because it's live you know do you believe anything you've said in this last hour I believe that I believe it yet hopefully I don't believe it <laughs> and it's been a pleasure uh, being here with you, Simon. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of your beautiful work to the world. And for all you lovely listeners and viewers, thank you for being weird enough and crazy enough to hang with Simon and I. It's been a pleasure to be here with you guys. <laughs> thank you. Likewise, JP. Likewise. And um, yeah, I'm going to continue to share your, your message. And and I always invite people back as well, JP. So maybe, you know, six months down the line, we can come in again and see if anything changed from anything that we thought was even true right now. I'd, I'd love that. I'd jump at that opportunity. <laughs> awesome. And if you're ever in Malta, this beautiful small island, then please, please let me know you're coming and uh, we can hang out and, with headbands and, and create some videos together. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds awesome. Take care, JP. All the best. Thank you, everybody for viewing it's another transparent conversation sign on the sofa i just you know i'm i'm drawn to these beautiful people and, and and bringing them to you is is a real gift and pleasure for me i i do it for myself like jp says i get filled up from these conversations and i invite you to do the same get together with beautiful people have these great conversations explore who you are what you're about and just enjoy your life god damn it you're a miracle whether you believe it or not Take care, see you again, and I love myself, my life, and all of you. Take care, bye-bye.